Hi guys, Deuce here today. We'll do something a little bit different for me. I'm gonna do a review of a firearm and today we're gonna to be doing a kind of a what's in the box, box opening type of review for the uh, Pieta 1873 Great Western II Generation II revolver in 357 mag, four and three quarter inch barrel. Um, kind of what prompted this review, just to give you a little bit of backstory, uh, one of the things that is curtailing um, cowboy action shooting right now is availability of firearms. Uh, pairs of guns, rifles, shotguns, they're just hard to find, hard to get. Um, you know, being that we are uh, in the business here at uh, Two Bear Arms and Paradise Pass Regulators, we, you know, try to get guns in as often as possible. They're just hard to come by. Um, pairs of Rugers, for example, Brand new pairs of Rugers are almost unobtainable right now at the moment. But uh, these came across the came across our uh, our desk and uh, had an opportunity to pick up a few of these, and uh, said, "What a good opportunity!" And and something that's important, I think, uh, to point out in part of this review is that uh, a pair of these Pietas is roughly half the cost of a pair of Rugers right now. So. Uh, for right around a thousand dollars, you can get into a pair of single actions to cowboy action shoot with. So, um, without any more droning on, let's uh, let's see what we got here. Open the box. Typical cardboard container here. Nothing fancy. Again, guys, this is going to be an unbiased review. I'm not getting paid by Pieta. Um, I bought these guns with my own money. I uh, just kind of felt compelled for the. The state of things right now to do this and um, and have a little fun with it. So again, these are Colt, Colt clones. Uh, these are a non-transfer bar gun. I want to point that out. Set this off to the side. Right there. Cut the seal here. All right. Typical owner's manual, which I know everyone will read front to back. Some other uh, literature. Uh, safety hang tags, nothing fancy. Let's get right into the gun here. Wrapped in plastic, I'm sure it's absolutely covered in oil, which is kind of as typical with most Italian firearms, and it is. Uh, right off the bat, initial reaction, guys. Really nice finish. Very lustrous blue. Um, even though this is a brand new gun in the box, as you always should, let's establish that it's unloaded. Gun is clear. Ooh. Uh, really nice feeling action, guys. Wow. Okay, we'll get into that a little bit further into the review. But as you can see uh, on first glance, pretty nice looking. These are a brass frame gun. Uh, I think it's important to point out that these are kind of their base model of Great Western. Brass frame, and one thing I noticed right off the bat, didn't even realize that uh, when we ordered these, is these cylinders are unfluted. Um, I can only hazard a guess that that's a cost-cutting measure, but um, I happen to love the look of unfluted cylinders. So honestly, with the unfluted cylinder, brass grip frame, very dark finish, that's a pretty mean-looking, bad-looking gun. So, so far, I like it. Um, brownish plastic grips, we'll get into those a little bit later, but initial feel, guys, um, while they are plastic and while they are a little chintzy feeling, they do feel good. They're nice and the profile's nice and thin, and they've got good texturing on them. So let's get this box out of the way here. Okay, guys, packaging's nothing fancy. Um, I don't really judge a firearm by how it's packaged, so they don't come with a hard case or anything. Um, but the, the price point uh, is reflective of that. So let me just do this quick wipe down here so we can so I can handle this without getting covered in oil. Okay guys, as I said, four and three quarter inch barrel, 357 magnum chambering, brass grip frame, um, really deep. Uh, Guys, honestly, I don't know if that's bluing or if that's some sort of, I, I don't know what kind of finish that is, but very deep bluing. I hope it's bluing. So that looks really nice. Um, 
should have brought some calipers in here so I can measure the rear sight. They don't look, they look pretty standard. Uh, that's what you'd find in a single action army. So on the narrow side, um, right off the bat, a uh, crescent to shaped ejector rod, which I prefer over a bullseye ejector rod. I think bullseye ejector rods are a pain in the butt to reholster. They're hard on holsters. And uh, I think they look a little goofy on, especially on a four and three quarter inch gun. So crescent ejector rod, I don't hate that. Again, guys, initial reaction, um, very, very smooth. I ordered spring kits in for these guns. Um, I am not gonna do anything to these guns until after I shoot them. My full intention is to take the pair that I have, I have another one right here in the box, So take the pair that I have and immediately go to the next monthly match of Paradise Pass regulators here in a couple weeks and take them right from the box, put them in my holsters and go to town. So um, to give you guys an open and honest review, I can see right now the base pin is a, a typical, is all Italian imports. It has two positions, uh, one for firing and one to lock the base pin back so the hammer cannot contact, uh, does not go fully into the frame and recess out of the recoil shield. So making it safe at that point in time. So I think that's a requirement for importation. But um, I've seen a lot of brass frame guns over the years, guys. Typically, uh, there's very visible pits and they're not necessarily finished very nicely. These actually made up and match up to the gun quite nicely. Um, again, guys, I'm doing this review by myself, so I don't have the ability to focus. Um, so I'm gonna do the best I can. So, but uh, you guys can see, very nicely finished. Nice feeling action. Um, I will be dry firing these guns a little bit as time goes on. Um, and I will be using snap caps typically, but I'm going to do a few dry fires just to get a feel. Okay, being a Ruger shooter, uh, the Colt style trigger is literally, it's offset in the frame, which is typical. And it's literally a quarter of the thickness of a, of a Ruger trigger, so it feels a little different to me. Um, action, uh, pulling the hammer back, mainspring feels really good. This gun is very smooth all the way through. Trigger pull is a little heavy. Uh, I happen to bring in a trigger pull gauge here so I can give you an idea. If I can get it turned on. Let's see what we're at here. It says four pounds, 11 ounces. Let's try that again. Four pounds, four ounces. Four pounds, three ounces. So uh, about a, you know, a four pound and some change trigger pull. Not not terrible. Not uh, not unusable by any means. Twice the trigger pull that I'm used to. So that's probably what I'm feeling. Um, while it is on the heavy side, it's fairly crisp. There's not a lot of creep in there. So, um, the grips, uh, the grips are very functional. Um, they're, they appear to be a two piece grip. Let's get into that and let's see what we're dealing with here because, uh, I'm one of those guys that really doesn't leave anything alone. It's kind of like, uh, rims on a car to me that, uh, I'm kind of a grip. I'm a grip, big grip guy and I love changing grips on guns and, Nothing I own has stock grips on it. So unless I'm waiting on grips to come in. So let's take a look at these panels here. Um, okay. Um, they are indeed just very uh, basic plastic molded grips. As you can see, they've got a, they've got a piece that a uh, filler piece, kind of a support piece that goes into one side of the, actually it goes into one side of grip. I, I would assume that is for support. Um, these, these are not, these are not by any means um, heavy duty grips. They're very thin, very plastic. Again, guys, um, probably for two reasons, um, lower production cost, and they're probably very available and easy to get. Um, they're probably having somebody make these for them. Um, again, I, I guess I've seen where they are definitely about plastic, as you can see. Um, as to be expected, um, 
you know, your interior finishes on your grip frame, which you don't see and don't matter, aren't polished out. Um, I can tell you right off the mainspring, they are, they're using some sort that's not your, I've seen, I've uh, been inside your birdie guns and, and older Pietas that have a much heavier, and even Colts that have a much heavier mainspring. So that mainspring is very obviously designed um, to feel better than your average stock gun. Okay, I do know, what I do know about these guns, because I've had the chance to be inside of a few of them in the past, is that they have coil sprung the hand, uh, Ruger style coil spring for the hand. The, the flat spring on a typical single action army is a point of breakage for the hand. So all of these come coil sprung, which is a huge plus for durability. Um, put these grips back on while I'm talking. Guys, initial reaction. Um, Got to tell you, being a Ruger snob and a massive Ruger fan, and I have a ridiculous amount of Rugers myself, um, and a lot and a lot of investment in in what Ruger makes. Um, I'm impressed with these so far. Let's see if I can get these back on without breaking something here. Um, initial reaction, again, you know, nicely finished, especially for their uh, kind of their starting gun in their lineup. I know that uh, the Great Western lineup's been around for quite a long time. Um, and from, you know, from what I understand, um, oh boy, there we go. From what I understand, uh, you know, there is just the Great Western does not, the Great Western, if anybody is a single action fan, they'll be familiar with the Great Western revolvers from the 60s uh, that were German made. Struggling here on camera, apologize. Um, they don't have any affiliation with the Great Western revolvers of that era. So, um, what you don't want to do, guys, is you don't want to over tighten a plastic set of grips here. And I, as I'm trying to put these back on, my discussion just moved on me here. So, it's not, it's not really a negative, but it does happen. Just tighten, don't want to over tighten those because I'm certain these will break if you over tighten them. So, okay. Um, one thing I always kind of like to look at is some of the details of, uh, not that I'm an expert by any means, but uh, I like to look at the cylinder faces and see what kind of care was given and finishing those off. Um, yeah, there's a, there's some machining marks on there, but honestly, it's a pretty good looking cylinder face. So, um, unfluted cylinder, which again, I really dig. A um, lot of grease, hard to tell. Guys, really nicely finished. I'm impressed. Um, of course, the proof is gonna be in the shooting. But, uh, and yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a couple of uh, notations here about me testing these guns out. Um, I am definitely not your average Joe when it comes to the abuse that can be put on a single action. Um, and I know that, so I don't, I am not holding these guns to a, uh, to the same expectations that I would, uh, you know, like for example, I only shoot uh, late 90s produced old model Vaqueros. That's my preference. That's for my experience. That's what I know what works really well. So um, I'm not going to hold these to the same account. That being said, I'm not saying that they can't be a great set of guns for somebody not only to start with, but to continue with. Um, if I like these guns, I'm obviously going to keep the pair for uh, backups, loaners, that kind of stuff. I loan a lot of guns out to new shooters. So these would be perfect. I also have three children that I have to eventually outfit for cowboy action shooting, which I have most of their stuff already, but this would be a nice pair to throw into the mix. So initial reactions, hope I haven't grown on too long. Feel great. Um, you know, I think they'll run. I think they'll rock and roll. Uh, hopefully they hold up. Hopefully I don't have any, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't expect any breakdowns. So, um, so far guys for a thousand bucks for a pair of entry level revolvers, that look pretty good. Again, the grips, I'm not in love with them. 
but if I had to choose a, an area on a gun that maybe was a little, uh, that lacked a little bit of uh, effort, uh, the grips is one of them because it's not insurmountable. I'm not sure what's available for replacements for these or by who. So uh, maybe somebody can clue me in on that. But uh, timing on these guns, as far as bolt rise, looks spot on. Um, just from what I've done in dry fire with these, I see no evidence of a drag line or anything. It's probably too early to tell. Um, I tell you, I, what I will be doing when I shoot these guns for the monthly is I will be taking, uh, because this is a budget-minded review, and anybody could do this on any revolver, I will be taking some testers gold model paint and painting the front sights, because I can tell you right now, if I don't paint that sight, front sight for the black on black gun, as part of my from box to holster review, I won't be hitting anything, which will be embarrassing and it won't be a testament to the guns. But guys, I'm also probably, hopefully today, um, I'll put these on paper just at 10 yards offhand to give a general accuracy out. I'm gonna be shooting 38 specials out of them. I'm not gonna be shooting any 357 mag. Um, this is a kind of a purpose-driven review and a purpose-driven gun for me. I bought it for the sport of SAS. SAS is cowboy action shooting. So, um, yeah. And uh, thanks for watching this review. If you're not a SAS member, join. They're our governing body. Uh, they're responsible for the sport of cowboy action shooting and uh, the success that it is today. So if you're not a member, join up, sasnet.com. So thanks for watching this review, and uh, keep an eye out for further reviews on these revolvers. Have a good one.